A few months ago, I made a video looking back at what was such a popular period for Pokemon Go, the summer of 2016. That famous period where it seemed like everybody, even your grandma, was out at a park playing Pokemon Go for a week or two long period where eventually the people that weren't really into it that much kind of left it behind either because of a lack of interest or simply because of all the server problems that were being caused by simply too many players. And ultimately I stuck around because I was a Pokemon fan and ended up playing the game even through the Minnesota winter of 2016 into the spring of 2017. And after the Johto region came out, I had kind of decided that, you know, it was cool they'd added another region, but regardless, it just wasn't enough to keep me in the game. The overall formula of Pokemon Go had not really evolved. They hadn't changed that much. And there were still all these different factors that people were clamoring for, and yet Niantic was not delivering. However, after I made that video a few months ago looking back at Pokemon Go, my friend Dylan continued to try to push me and push me to get back into the game. He still actively plays Pokemon Go and he really wanted to see me do it too. So a couple weeks ago, I went out and played with him for the first time in over a year. Again, I had not played since the spring of 2017. Then I ultimately discovered that Pokemon Go has evolved tremendously since that initial summer of 2016 launch. So for those of you who have not played the game since 2016 or early 2017 like I had, then today's video is going to be very helpful for you if you are interested in getting back into the game or just have any lingering curiosity for it. Because again, it has evolved substantially and we're going to go over those changes in today's video. I have gotten back into actively playing this game. It could be a fad for me, it might wear off eventually, or maybe I'll be playing it for the long term. But here we go, let's get into the many changes this game has experienced over the past two years. As already mentioned, the first thing is all of the new Pokemon. Now, this isn't just simply the addition of the Johto region, as I previously mentioned. The Hoenn region, the third generation, has also been added in addition to some fancy new styles of Pokemon. Aloha versions or something like that, which are popular in the 3DS games, have been added as well as shiny Pokemon. You can see here I have a shiny Golem, which obviously I evolved from a shiny Geodude all the way up. So we have this added collectability that goes into certain Pokemon having more rare forms because of these new updates. And then obviously the addition of the new generations has brought upon you know just more Pokemon and more diversity in what you're catching. One of the things that bothered me about you know the initial summer was we were all trying to catch the same you know, 150 Pokemon, but of course not all those are the base evolution, so the evolutions were much more uncommon. Then some Pokemon like Dratini were just plain uncommon in the first place. Uh, Grimer and Muck were severely uncommon, some of them were region exclusive. In the end, there were probably about 70 Pokemon that might have spawned at any given time. Obviously, that has changed now just because of all of the new Pokemon that have been added into the mix. Now, another neat thing is the weather actually impacting the spawn. So right now, uh, it's partly cloudy, so that's going to cause normal and rock types to appear, as well as a bonus Stardust being given for catching those types of Pokemon. This weather thing is actually fairly accurate. Um, sometimes it will show rain when it's not actually raining, but if that's happening, it, it's really cloudy, and it's likely it'll be raining soon. Um, so the weather is actually very impactful to the game, which is a neat additional feature. Now, when you're out there checking out you know, Pokemon, obviously you're also gonna be going to Pokestops and gyms, and new Pokestops have been added that I don't remember there being in that initial summer. I know that Niantic kind of opened it up where people can submit new Pokestops now, and that has created an opportunity for new Pokestops to be added as well as new gyms, but it's also caused some to disappear. Now, it's not to say that a substantial number have disappeared, but obviously some people were upset by the game's popularity and people showing up you know, around their general area in, in large flocks that had never been seen before, and obviously these things got reported and eventually removed. Another older feature that some of you may not be familiar with, this came out I believe in late 2016, is the buddy feature. So now you can assign a Pokemon to be your buddy, 
and when you walk, it actually earns candy for that Pokemon. Now, I had Magikarp as my assigned Pokemon for this entire time up until just a couple days ago. I finally, between catching and walking, was able to get enough Magikarp candy to finally evolve it into Gyarados. So now I have my Dragonair in there. So for Dragonair, every five kilometers you walk, I earn a Dratini candy. Now for Magikarp, it was every one kilometer I walked, I earned a candy. So depending on what Pokemon it is and how rare it is, uh, causes you know the change in the frequency of how far you have to walk in order to earn that candy. But regardless, it's a nice way to earn some additional candy. And then just going into this, there's also some you know additional social features that came with this. I have friends now on Pokemon Go. That's right, you can add friends in the same style that many Nintendo friends are added. It's through a code system rather than simply the username. Um, it's best to only add people that you're able to play with locally. So you see I have some people added here and Dylan who I mentioned previously in the video we can see is also walking a Dratini. We can see some stats about Dylan but the most impressive thing is I'm able to send these people gifts. That's a new item that you can actually pick up at Pokestops and then send to people. You cannot open them up yourself. Rather you have to send them to others and then I always hope that you know they'll send me a gift back. Now I'll show you here when I open one up. So it's almost like a small loot crate of sorts. Um, and it just has a few items in it. It's fairly basic. Uh, same sorts of things that you would get at a Pokestop. Now as you're exchanging these gifts as you're playing together, maybe at the same gym battles, you're increasing your friendship level. So you see me and this guy have a two star friendship. That's actually one of my highest friendships. Well, some of these other ones I'm working, you know, just over one star into the second star because again, I haven't been back to playing for that long. But the higher that that, that heart rating is, the stronger your friendship is in game, the better the odds of you getting better things out of the gifts as well as bonuses when you trade Pokemon. That's right, you can actually trade Pokemon now. You have to do this when you're within a like 100 meter proximity of one another. So again, you should only be adding friends that are people that you actually know or can play with in real life because you can't even trade with people across the internet. This is very much a localized thing. And then obviously another big thing that is still missing is the lack of true PvP. I cannot simply just play, you know, six on six against Dylan in the classic Pokemon fashion right now just because I want to. That's not available to me. But even the battling system has evolved. The gyms are, like I said, still there, but the visualization of them has changed a little bit as well as the way that they work. It's also even easier to get into a battle now because your battle parties can be preset. The game gives you the ability to set five pre-created teams of six as well as always recommending to you a team of six to go into the battle with. This makes starting the gym battles much more quicker, much more fun, and people don't sit on the gyms quite as long as they used to. It used to be a case of if you could stockpile a gym with quite a few good Pokemon by simply training up the gym and adding your Pokemon as you go that would create just this super powered gym that people would you know not necessarily always want to take on because it was a lot to take on through the old system if i remember correctly the first summer in order to capture a gym you had to defeat all of the pokemon on the gym that would decrease the xp of the gym thus causing some pokemon to be knocked off the gym through the current system you don't need to train up a gym to add a pokemon so i could believe as many as six pokemon can be added to a gym freely so if you see a gym that your team controls there's three pokemon on it you can add your pokemon to that gym now this doesn't necessarily create overpowered gyms again and the reason is because these pokemon actually lose cp over time they lose cp the longer they sit on the gym even if they don't battle anybody now when you are battling a gym as you can see Every single time you defeat the Pokemon on the gym, they lose CP in addition to losing CP over time. In the event that a gym has been held for a very long time, there might be six Pokemon on it. By the time it's been sitting there for a day, the CP on those Pokemon will be reduced to probably less than 100 CP, which would make taking out the gym be very, very easy. 
Now, the one way you can get your Pokemon to last on a gym for longer than a day, even taking into account the fact that the CP is basically bleeding out the entire time, is through feeding them berries. You can click on a gym and give your Pokemon a berry even when you're not in range of the gym, and you can do this through the My Profile screen. This allows you to always keep your Pokemon, I guess, somewhat refreshed, assuming that you have enough berries to do it. Now, this can become a very strenuous process, and it's the reason why not everybody does this is just simply because there's not enough berries to do it, which is, I think, very good for the game. It's easy to add your Pokemon to gyms because you don't have to trade them, train them up if your team already owns it, and it's easy to overtake the gym if it's been sitting for a day or more. So it just kind of keeps things fresh. Now, when you have Pokemon on these gyms, you do earn 10 coins per hour with a maximum of 50 coins earnable per day that obviously you can then spend in the store. And we'll get into the store a little bit later, but the one new type of battling that I do want to mention are raids, your special timed events that appear through the nearby Pokemon tab in something called raids. This is basically one super powered Pokemon that appears on top of a gym and just kind of temporarily overtakes the gym. If you go to that gym during the specified time shown on the raid map, you can basically battle that huge Pokemon that probably has over 20,000 CP, sometimes over 50 or 60,000 CP if it's a legendary. And at the end of the battle, you get a few tries to capture that Pokemon if you succeed in defeating it. Now, raids are almost impossible to do alone, and you need to do them with a team. So obviously, if you have friends that play, you can try to do it with them. If you don't, you can just show up at these raids and see if other people will show up as well to try and take down the raid. People definitely do do that, at least in my area, especially when it's a legendary Pokemon, which is one of the coolest factors of raids. You saw when I was scrolling through my Pokemon, I don't have any legendaries yet. I haven't gotten to do one of those real cool raids, but I did do a raid for Alakazam, which was something I didn't have, and, and honestly it was probably never to get enough Abra candy to get. Anyways, so this is an awesome opportunity to catch some of the rarest Pokemon in the game by going to these raids. But like I said, they can be quite difficult, so you'll want to be sure to have some people to team up with, or show up at the beginning of the raids time period because that's when it's most likely that you'll find other people there willing to help you out. Now the raid system is also a little bit of a pay to play type of thing because you do have to have a raid pass in order to compete in a raid. Now luckily raid passes are given out once per day for free at the location of raids and depending on you know if you live in a large metropolitan area or a small town if you live in a small town it's unlikely you would see more than one raid per day anyways but again if you live in a large metropolitan area odds are there's multiple raids going on even at once so you're gonna miss out on some of them unless you're willing to pay i believe it is a dollar worth of pokey coins in order to get a raid pass to compete in that raid now another new thing that's been added is challenges. This is something that I am so excited about because it just gives you new opportunities to earn more XP, which is something that was kind of hard to do once you got past level 20. It seemed like the leveling took forever. Well, with the challenges, that changes it up a little bit. Now there's two kinds. There's field and special. So the special ones are kind of like preset ones that it has you move through as you're leveling. Um, and then ultimately you get the rewards at the bottom. The field ones are more of my favorite. They're the ones that you pick up at Pokestops. Now, if I don't want to do the one that's hatched three eggs, I could delete it and then I could pick up a new one at the Pokestop. The other neat thing about the field ones is you earn a special prize if you can complete seven of them before the end of the month and you can even earn multiple of these prizes. So I now have all seven and I'm able to get the reward for this month, which is an Entei, and I would assume you know it's gonna be something even cooler maybe, or equally cool next month. So you get a whole wad of XP, um, and then a chance at an Entei right here. So obviously it's not a super high CP by any means, it's 1400, still pretty good in the scheme of things when my highest Pokemon's only 1900, 
but you know it's a cool Pokemon it's an Entei it's a legendary and like I said earlier in the video I never had a legendary before so now all of a sudden I have an Entei and the last thing I want to talk about is the store one thing that always seems to plague mobile games is microtransactions and while I complain that the raid passes are limit one free per day the truth is Pokemon Go is one of those rare games where it's a mobile game that doesn't feel like it's really trying to pressure me to buy anything in the store. There's a few different loot crate type of boxes here, but the truth is it really gives you exactly what you're getting. It's no secret as to what you're getting, and buying these individual items aren't actually that bad of prices when you consider that you know you can get 50 Poke Coins fairly easily every day if you play at you know one or two gyms. But I don't really feel pressured to buy anything in here, even if I wouldn't be incentivized through earning the coins in game. Um, assuming that you have an area in your town that has a few Poke Stops that you can recover items through, there's really no point of buying those. So you're looking more at buying the bag upgrade to hold more items, or buying the Pokemon storage to hold more Pokemon or the lucky eggs in order to level up faster, or the incubators to hatch more eggs. But the point is, all of this lets you do more stuff. It doesn't necessarily let you do it better. It doesn't make you be necessarily more competitive in the gyms. It just lets you get more Pokemon. And in the scheme of things, in the big picture, maybe it does make you more competitive in the gyms. But with the way the CP is literally just bleeding out anyways, I don't know if it really matters. Pokemon Go is one of those games where it's competitive, but yet it's not cutthroat competitive. Because it seems like even if you were a bad player that started yesterday, you know, and your best Pokemon is like a 700 CP Ivysaur, you know, like the reality is you wouldn't be awful at this. Like you could beat some gyms with the 700 CP Ivysaur in the event that you went to gyms that had low CP Pokemon because they had sat for you know, a day or 18 hours or something like that. So it just seems like it's at a point right now where it's very accessible. I think that a lot of people can get into this game and be productive players, but more importantly, be a great part of a community. You don't realize until you go back to playing Pokemon Go that more than likely, if your town has a population of 50,000 or higher, other people are actually still playing Pokemon Go. There is a dedicated group of people that still play Pokemon Go. And I think that the majority of them would be more than happy to see you join them. This is not a toxic community. Yes, occasionally you hear a story on Reddit where somebody was like cutthroat about, you know, you took their gym and they want to like IRL beat you up or something for it. ridiculous over a kid's game. The truth is the majority of people that play this game want to see you play it too and they're going to be able to they're going to be willing to help you and happy to help you because they want everybody to have this great experience and that's the reason why I made this video because I think that more people should get back into playing what really is Pokemon Go 2.0. I'm so excited to play this game um and you know having taken so much time off from it I was almost overwhelmed by the amount of changes and just blown away by the amount of changes that it underwent in about a year and a half since I had last played. But it's just an exciting game. It's a great reason to go outside and obviously the Minnesota winter here coming up might change that a little bit. But I do think very highly of Pokemon Go in 2018 and I would definitely recommend you open it up again and take a look at maybe if it's something worth playing. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Bailey, and I will see you in the next video.